Dzień dobry Państwu. Chciałbym dzisiaj, jak się pojawi prezentacja, opowiedzieć Reaching the Stars i to nie w sensie takim przysłowiowym, tylko dosłownym. So now in English. So Reaching the Star is not the symbolic uh, title that I would like to describe some Reaching the Stars, but I would like to describe what are the limitations on the physics side on the journey to the nearest star. I'm a physicist, so I ask the question, independent of the present technology or available technology, what are the limitations that we can have? So, let's assume that we would like to travel to the nearest habitable planet, which is probably orbiting our nearest star, which is Proxima Centauri. This star is roughly 4.3 light years from us. That's the nearest star besides the sun, of course. So what are the physical limitations to such a travel? This potentially habitable planet is there. Probably there is water. Probably the water is in the liquid state there. So it is potentially very attractive. But the distance that we have here is extremely large, 4.3 light years. So we would like to go there in a comfortable way. What does that mean? That means that the acceleration in our capsule is 10 meters per second. So exactly the same as we have here. So sitting on a chair, we would weigh the same as here you do in your chairs. So the assumption is we go with the velocity 10 meters per second. So everything looks very comfortable, looks like at home. The next assumption is, is that with we, the capsule is one ton, just to make some measure. So we are accelerating for some number of years, then we are decelerating for the same number of years, and we end up on this habitable planet. The question is, how long will it take, first of all? How much time will it take for the astronaut in the capsule, because that will be different from our time on Earth, because our speed will be very, very high at the end. And the next question will be, how much energy do we need to accelerate for this number of years and decelerate for this number of years, purely on the physical side? So we assume no technology which is existing or even planned, just physical limitations. So, it turns out that we should accelerate for three years and decelerate for three years in the Earth time. That's not the same time as the clock for someone in the capsule, because the clock will be different, that I will show in a minute. So it takes six years in the Earth time to go there, with the acceleration 10 meters per second. The distance, that's the only equation that I have, that I will show, with, that's the, the uh, expression for the distance. C is, of course, the velocity of light. It turns out that 10 meters per second squared that we have on Earth is a very peculiar number. That means that in one year, we would get velocity of light. It's probably accidental, but it's very strange that it's very, very simple, this our acceleration, acceleration that we have on, on the Earth. The distance traveled, when we plug in this number here, and we plug th three years to, to t, is exactly 4.3 light years. So in six years on Earth, we would go there and we would be there. That's not very long. Then we ask what will be the, our velocity in the middle of the journey, because we would accelerate, and then we would decelerate. The middle of the journey, we would have the velocity 0.95 c, which means roughly 385,000 kilometers per second. And then we would go backwards to zero at the end of the journey. So this is what we can get. And then we ask, uh, what is the time of the someone traveling in the capsule? As we said, on the Earth, 
we would measure six years. But in the capsule, since the astronaut flies with higher and higher velocity, his or her clock runs slower. Therefore, the actual calculation shows that this time in the middle of the journey is only 1.82 years in comparison to three years for someone on the Earth. So it will take, in total, inside the capsule, only 3.64 years instead of six years on the Earth. So that's the uh, difference of time, which is the special theory of relativity, of course. So it would take only almost four years to go to the nearest habitable planet. Uh, now, the question of energy. How much energy would we need to propel the rocket in the Earth time for three years, then to decelerate for three years? And now, for purely physical limitations, I'm, I'm looking only, I'm not looking for any rocket technology that we have or even plan to have. So, the best imaginable rocket engine throws the quote-unquote exhaust gases with velocity of light. It cannot do better. So the velocity of light is the maximal velocity with which we can throw back the exhaust gases. I would mean photons, because only photons can be thrown back with velocity of light. So this is a photonic engine. I'm assuming that we have a photonic engine. Then, we three years of acceleration on the Earth and three years of deceleration, we have to start with 38 tons, burn, burn, I mean convert into photons, 37 tons, and we end up with one ton capsule that is landing on the habitable planet. But what means burning? Burning means that I'm converting something into photons. So the only thing that I can think of is converting antimatter with matter. So they annihilate, produce two photons, and these two photons are thrown back from the rocket. So we would have roughly 19 tons of anti-hydrogen, for example, 19 tons of hydrogen, and then we slowly annihilate the two during the journey. Of course, it's completely improbable or impossible now even to think how to contain, how to store the antimatter, 17 or 18 tons of antimatter. And now the question, how long would it take, even if we had such a storage container, how long would it take to produce this amount of energy? Now the numbers, the global electricity production now in the world is equivalent to roughly 10 to the 20 joules per year, which is equivalent to burning, quote-unquote, one ton per year. So if we had one ton or half a ton on, of antimatter and half a ton of matter, probably it would be on this stage, no problem to put it on this stage, that is equivalent to the total global production of electricity in the world. That is to be compared with billions of tons of other fuel that we have to burn to have the same effect. So that shows how ineffective we are, in a sense, in uh, using energy. Even nuclear energy would need not one ton, but with present energy, it's roughly 110,000 tons. With the best energy, nuclear energy, it would be 100 tons, roughly. So we would need to burn one ton per year to get our uh, energy. I would like to ask, are there any volunteers? Thank you very much.